We're planning to light all of our productions with candles. And the reason for that is because we know that in Shakespeare's indoor theater, in the indoor theaters of the 17th century, that all the performances were lit with candles. One of the issues with the candles in here has been the globe next door, which is obviously a wooden building with a thatched roof. We had to prove, on paper at least, that um, if there was a fire in here, it wouldn't, there's no danger that it would actually spread over to the globe. It's physically separated, obviously, and it's also covered in a brick shell. The inside is all timber, but oak has got this incredible property. Oak actually um, burns less quickly than steel. And we basically started by having a meeting with the local fire brigade and all the health and safety authorities. And Martin White, Professor Martin White from Bristol, he was there and we lit five candles. So everyone sat down, we lit these candles and the first thing he did was push them over. And of course all the firemen jumped back and were a bit alarmed. But actually what, and he left them there and what it just proved was that actually candles are very safe. It's all about how you use them. We've done quite a bit of work in the architectural research group on candles and candlelight, and that's largely stemmed from the work of uh, Professor Martin White at Bristol. And he did research on the types of candles that were used in the 17th century. And what we were looking for was the kind of light that would be given off by a, a number of candles being used at the same time. So is it a warm light? Is it a harsh light? And at that point, we realized beeswax was actually quite an appealing, attractive light. We were looking at things like what impact draft might have on how long a candle burns. And it's all to do with the flame. As soon as the flame goes off vertical, uh, that's when they start to disintegrate. We've done a lot of experiments in here to try and keep any air movement uh, as low velocity as possible. What we're aiming to do is get candles that will last for three and a half to four hours. That's the idea. Our plan is to have six candelabra with 12 candles in each one above people's heads. And then the wall is all sconces on the pillars. It can take three candles as well. So there's 24 candles there. One of the biggest challenges for the acting style here is going to be not only acting um, in a dark space, but actually then holding a candle. Because once they get over that, it's an incredibly powerful tool. It's amazing how much focus you can pull with a candle. And what you realize is actually lighting plays a really important part in telling the story in those indoor plays. One of the biggest challenges is people's perceptions of candles to get over that. How candles can be unromantic, I suppose. That's, you know, our perception of candles is that, you know, at dinner, that they're a romantic, nice touch. But actually, it's how you light someone doing a scene about killing someone or murdering someone without making them look like romantic. So I think there's a lot of subtleties that, of course, is what we're going to discover. Most of what we know about 17th century indoor performance is based on archival research and history books. So um, one of the things that we're hoping to try and discover in relation to candles is how lighting and lighting effects actually works in relation to the dramaturgy of a particular play. You have to unlearn a lot of the things that we've all been taught for the last you know, 50 years of indoor black box theatre. We're going to find out more about what the emotional effects of that are on the audience. And the audience is sort of, they will learn with us too, you know, the audience in the globe have learnt with us. So we're very excited about having a space to actually work out some of the, the, the more mysterious questions about lighting. We all know we can use electricity, so now it's the, going back the other way and see if we can get away with not using it.